G'day guys and gal, some people think there should be more representation in Warhammer 40k, more badass girl bosses slaying the day away, but some people clearly don't know about Saint Celestine, the biggest bad bitch in the galaxy, flying around smacking demons like it's nobody's business. She is quite literally an imperial demon and the evidence of the Empress power, since Chaos definitely isn't the one that's juicing her up. While she might seem a bit too perfect and angelic on the outside, not exactly grimdark, her lore is actually pretty messed up, especially the shit she has to go through every time she dies and needs to respawn. It's not a good time. However, all of it does add to how awesome of a character she actually is. Before we get started, my only goal in life is to be as hot as possible for as long as possible. Everything else revolves around that. To this end, I don't engage in bad habits like sucking down some poison, and with the help of today's sponsor, Fume, you don't have to either. Fume is a flavored air device that you suck on for a delicious explosion of yummy air without any of the negatives. No vapor, no nicotine, no smoke, just air. A fantastic way to break a bad habit. The device isn't just for sucking though, it was engineered to be the perfect fidget stick to help you get through your day. There are so many flavors to choose from, my favorite being crisp mint, orange vanilla, and sparkling grapefruit. Crisp mint slaps. It's like inhaling a minty, freshy chewy. Fume offers both the lighter prominent model as well as the dark Solano model, which is the one I use, that features an onyx tip and a walnut barrel. They also have a number of secondary products, like the magnet base, which lets you spin your fume around like the special little boy you are, as well as a fume topper, to keep everything covered and clean. So to get a great fiddle device, break a bad habit, or just want something yum to suck on, then head to tryfume.com and use code MAJORKILL or scan the QR code on screen, which will get you a free Fume topper when you order the Fume journey pack. Cheers to Fume for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the lore of Saint Celestine, detailing how she became a living saint, what power she has, what she's done in the lore, and what she's up to now. Uh, let's get into it. Although the Emperor isn't in a very chatty mood at the moment, being an undying Skeletor battery has that effect, he is still immensely powerful. His shattered consciousness still seeks to protect and help mankind. Often without realizing it, he will save entire worlds, or in some cases, create living saints, brave, pure, and heroic mortals who died faithfully and now return with a burning vengeance, greatly empowered. There are multiple living saints. Many were previously sisters of battle, but some have also been guardsmen. Some people are so awesome in life that when they die, they are declared living saints despite not being one. For example, Lord Macarius, Space Alexander the Great. However, no one is quite a living saint like Saint Celestine. This bitch flies, has a flaming sword, has doves and shit that appear, has two chicks that fly around with her. When you think of living saints, you think of Saint Celestine. But how did she come about this awesome power? Well, the thing that distinguishes the Empress demons, like the Legions of the Damned, the Living Saints, and even the Sanguinor, as opposed to the Chaos Demons, is that they were once living mortals who ascended to become Imperial Demons. So they are like demon princes, whereas most Chaos Demons are shards of their patron Chaos God. So Saint Celestine was once a mortal woman. Her pre-Saint life is shrouded and doesn't give us much information, with some sources saying she was actually a citizen of Terra during the Horus Heresy. And her first death was during the Orbital War Bombardment of Terra. From this, we can assume she was a follower of the Lictitio Divinitatis. The next time we see her, confusingly, she is a Sister Repenta of the Order of Our Martyred Lady, probably the most popular Sister of Battle Order. However, the Sister Repentas are those crazy naked chicks that wield gigantic chainswords in battle, basically Sister of Battle Berserkers. Generally, when sisters sin, they discard their armor and become a Repentia, seeking absolution via death in battle. It's unclear what sin Celestine committed, but if she had already died and been been reborn by this point, perhaps she joined the Sister Repenta in a similar way to how Space Marine Black Shields joined the Death Watch. Don't ask questions, just let me die for the Empress sort of vibe. The law regarding her being an Imperial Citizen is pretty new, was a brief reference, and I haven't actually read the source material in the new Saint Celestine book for it yet, so if I'm just talking shit, then I'll repent by getting my balls stomped 11 times so hopefully I'm wrong. During an especially hectic battle against a bunch of heretics, Celestine massacred over 100 of them before she was taken out. Her body was recovered, however the other sisters were shocked to see that she was still alive and radiated holy power. When they cleaned her, there was no wounds on her body and she rose again, ready for round two. Celestine didn't hear no bell. She led the sisters in battle the next day and after her Zenkai boost, absolutely stomped. Her commander wanted to push onward to attack the capital world of the heretics, but Celestine wanted to do a side quest first. She went to a little 
unknown world that many years prior, St. Catherine had visited. St. Catherine was the second in command to Alicia, the original leader and founder of the Sisters of Battle, with St. Catherine also being the founder of the Order of Our Martyred Lady, the order that Celestine was part of. So she was pretty important. On the world, Celestine discovered Catherine's golden power armor as well as her ardent blade, a master crafted power sword that can ignite into flames. Needless to say, Celestine had repented and was now declared a living saint, radiating the power of the Emperor. She progressed the main quest, took out the heretic capital, and then led her army of followers to victory time and time again during the Wars of Faith, which was a general term for any war that heavily involved the ecclesiarchy and was usually centered around conquest. During one such war, Celestine was killed when the traitors detonated an atomic warhead failsafe in a pretty dog act, obliterating the living saint. Everyone was pretty bummed out by this, with the bells of the Imperial Palace itself tolling in mourning. But she survived! Celestine randomly returned at an extremely clutch moment, saving a force of sisters and salamanders who were fighting the Black Legion. She personally slew the demon prince in command and led the loyalists to victory. However, she quickly dipped after that. It seems she went back into the warp. As an imperial demon, she could do so easily and without risk of getting attacked by warp predators. She was of the warp. It was her home. In the warp, she managed to find a few thousand sisters of battle who had been lost. Often imperial ships would be blown off course and their navigators killed. The ship would still be alive, but with no navigator, they'd be stuck in the warp and declared lost. People like Celestine could find them, however, and find them she did, as she brought them out of the warp to help defend Cadia during the 13th Black Crusade. Her arrival also resurrected two canonesses, Eleanor and Genevieve, who were brave sisters of battle that were chosen to be her Gemini superior, basically her support warriors. Since Celestine helped turn the tide of the battle against the traitors, slaughtering demons of all sizes, she even fought Abaddon in personal combat alongside her Gemini superior, and the fight was actually pretty even. However, when the Necron pylons were activated, which weakened the warp on Cadia with the goal of shrinking the Eye of Terror and banishing all the demons, Saint Celestine was also weakened, allowing Abaddon to gain the upper hand. Despite this, they did actually beat Abaddon, although it took the help of Inquisitor Greyfax, a bunch of Cadians, and Lord Commander Creed as well. Celestine was able to shank Abaddon, wounding him pretty badly. Abaddon was salty as fuck about this, so he threw a Blackstone Fortress at Cadia, destroying it. Celestine led the survivors out via a secret webway gate that she was psychically guided to by the Elder, becoming the Imperial Commander and overall leader. She led this force through a lot of bullshit, as the webway is always full of bullshit, getting help from the Elder along the way. Before they arrived at McCrag, which was under siege by the Black Legion, as they knew the survivors of Cadia were heading here and were sus as fuck about what they were trying to do. By leading Yvrain and call to McCrag, they were able to complete the resurrection of Primarch Gilliman, the most pivotal moment in 40k lore for around a decade and the only thing that has given the Imperium an actual chance against Chaos. She even continued on to Terra alongside Gilliman, being a massive asset during the extremely difficult journey. Now the community has a bit of a meme between Saint Celestine and Inquisitor Greyfax. They get shipped as a lesbian couple, almost as much as Yvrain and Gilliman get shipped. This was because originally, Greyfax didn't trust Celestine and saw her as a warp abomination, although the law doesn't create any sexual tension between them. This original conflict gets resolved when Gilliman revives and Greyfax is like, holy fuck, and thus Greyfax trusts Celestine from then on, with one scene even having Celestine offering herself to Greyfax to use her as a warp tuning device. Once again, not sexual, but it does come across as a bit suggestive. Basically, it's the formula of Greyfax doesn't like Celestine, which creates sexual tension, which is then released in a hectic lesbian sex scene upon Gilliman's resurrection. That's basically the entire fanfic and look. I'll allow it. With Gilliman back in charge and launching the Indominus Crusade, Celestine follows her own path to help mankind. Getting caught up in a chaos plot where a Lord of Change was manipulating the Ecclesiarchy in an attempt to possess Celestine and use her to manifest in reality. It was classic Zinchian bullshit. The plot failed when a custodian called Longinus killed Celestine as she was being possessed, causing her to instantly revive and hunt down the Lord of Change before beating the shit out of him and banishing him back to hell. Interestingly, Longius is also the custodian who originally met with Alicia and Catherine in order to bring them to the Emperor and convince them that their master, Georges Van Dyer, was a fucking dick and not worthy of their loyalty. So he has a lot of connection with the Sisters of Battle. Even more interestingly, Longius is one of the names that the Horus Heresy era custodies called Amon Takamarian had. Amon being one of the most well-known custodies of that time. So there's a good chance that Amon is the Longius in the current setting, making him over 10,000 years old. 
No real surprise there, custodies pretty much don't age out of their prime, although visually they can look like older men who would be in their 40s or 50s. When custodies retire to become eyes of the emperor, it's not because of age, it's more so due to the accumulation of permanent injuries. Celestine was then drawn to the planet of Tsareka, what the fuck is that name? It had a special psyker on it that was like a mini astronomicon and they wanted to save them for obvious reasons. However, Khan the Betrayer invaded the world which caused the massive WWE anime tier smackdown between the living saint and the avatar of Korn. Out of desperation, Celestine allowed the Alpha Legion to take the Psyker and held off Khan for as long as she could, before he killed her. She would return to life not too long afterwards on a different planet, where she would lead the Imperial forces against the Kornite blood cult. Although she won, some of her allies were corrupted by Korn and she was forced to purge her own forces. However, as the last of them were being culled, she was hit full force with a Melter Gun killing her, with that being the last we see of Saint Celestine in the current lore. So the three things you're probably currently wondering is how does she come back to life, what's up with those two bodyguard chicks she always seems to have, her Gemini superior, and what powers does she have? In terms of her resurrections, when Saint Celestine dies, she goes to the warp in her own version of Hell. She wakes on a mountain of bones, broken armor, and whatnot, bearing the same recent injuries as what killed her. She also loses her memory. To come back to life, she has to journey through this hellish realm and recover her memory memory, sword, armor, as well as shards of her own soul, that being faith, duty, and hope. Once she has completed the trials and recovered all of herself, she is able to return to the setting. However, every time she does these trials, there is a genuine chance of failure, with failure meaning she would either be permanently destroyed or corrupted by chaos. So far, she has never failed. As for a Gemini superior, they are never the same two sisters of battle. Eleanor and Genevieve were both killed during the fall of Cadia. Whenever Celestine appears, she empowers two new canonesses to become her new Gemini. Gemini superior by imbuing one of them with faith and the other with duty, thus they become extensions of herself. It's a massive honor to be chosen, but it probably means you'll also die very, very soon. As for her powers, she is extremely fast, durable, and strong, happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the most powerful the setting has to offer. She can obviously self-resurrect and is extremely good at banishing corruption and demons. She can spawn holy fire, shoot psychic blasts, can shield herself her allies, also she can fly, no fucking shit. Asking what Saint Celestine can do is, is kind of like asking what Magnus can do, whatever the fuck the plot requires of them. I'd say in terms of where she ranks in the Imperium's power level, she would be one of their most powerful easily, only behind people like Gilliman, the Lion, the Sanguinor, and maybe Mephiston. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up some Major Gear 600k merch. We've sold out of one of the singlets and only have about 10% or so of the rest remaining, so there isn't much left. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.